Today we have a man with over 30 years of experience in dealing with men at Best For Him Show. Mr. Sanjay Jha is the CHRO and the Senior Vice President of Business Development and OEM Relations at Mahindra First Choice Means Limited. So sir, taking this conversation forward, mm -hmm. we've often seen that men, they have serious problems with their work-life balance. Now everybody wants to maintain a work-life balance, but you know, everybody does not get the right coaching, the right, uh, we can say, guidance mm -hmm. on how to maintain it. So, in this uh, show, could you guide our uh, audience sure. a bit about how to maintain work-life ba balance as men yeah. and why they are not able to balance this? Sure. So, let us first of all dive a bit deeper into what lead to, you know, the, you know, lack of balance, so to speak, in men's life. So. You know, as I mentioned that men is sort of, you know, wired to have more and more authority, more and more power, more and more control. Men are generally obsessed with this fact that I have to earn money and I have to take care of my family. And that gets reflected in terms of showing the immense work alcoholism, so to speak man would try to do everything to earn more and more money and grow. Unfortunately, organization does not have unlimited resources. Organization would give increments and the promotion to select few people who would be doing better than others. Now, this leads to the vicious loop in the life of men. Men would start kind of, you know, punishing himself. Men would start thinking that I am not good. He would start taking resort of alcohol, cigarette, and then his health would go for sort of, you know, six, as they say. And then it is, it is like, it is like, you know, uh, spiraling down and down and down. So this is one area where men needs to be aware and needs to address this psychological problem, which get manifested in terms of uh, physical problems, so to speak. The second area is that, as I mentioned, that we are living in digital era, where AI is taking all the physical jobs, so to speak, the jobs which can be done by, uh, by, by, by the workers, so to speak, or automated. or automated, yes, automation is happening. And so, be it men or women, both can, or for that matter, anybody, any, uh, any person can, can do the job the same job with the same or similar competence, similar effectiveness, so to speak. The men need to be aware that, I mean, I honestly don't need to punish myself if my other counterparts are doing better than me or at par with me. So this will also help him to loosen himself, be calmer and calmer. You know, men, needs to appreciate this fact that the material growth is not the only factor which gives happiness or actual meaning to the life. There are many more things, so to speak, like how do you contribute, uh, add value in others' life, uh, how well-read you are and how widened is your perspective. So the way you see the bigger truth, that brings more and more uh, knowledge, more and more appreciation about the diversity and happiness. So these are the three things. As I mentioned, let me summarize. The first part, I said that uh, the obsession of the control and authority, that man needs to be aware and gradually get rid of that thing. Second, as I said that, 
their other counterparts, uh, women or, or other gender people, uh, they are also at par and they can also do the same job, similar job. This appreciation is very much important for men because more and more men will appreciate and respect the diversity at workplace. He'll be more and more calmer, more and more happy. He will have much broader perspective. And third thing, I, I just said that unnecessarily men starts getting into the VCS loop, getting into smoking, alcohol, then diet problem, then less exercise, etc., etc., and that leads to sort of you know physical problem. So when men are not able to maintain their work-life balance, how do organizations come into the picture then? Okay, great point. So organization has responsibility to take care of men. Uh, see, uh, again, let me tell you that this is a very interesting and counterintuitive subject though. Uh, in many organizations, this subject is not discussed. Management needs to appreciate this fact that uh, men, because of the deep-rooted belief system, is going through that conflict at his psychological level, the identity problem at his psychological level. And no amount of increment or promotion or rewards and recognition can help men to become happy or you know, get the meaning of life, so to speak. So what is really important? Organization should appreciate that every human being is a great possibility, has humongous potential. What is required is that let men be aware of this fact that, you know, he can, he's stuck somewhere and that is the reason he is going through, you know, that rut, so to speak, in the life, that strenuous uh, experience, so to speak, in life. And so coaching uh, is a great technique that way, I would say. So I am a certified coach. Uh, so coach can help, uh, you know, the uh, men to become aware where he is stuck and help men to reach the core and thereby find out, you know, the bigger truth and the bigger happiness in their life. So typically when somebody comes to you, uh, uh, you know, as a person who has challenges to mm -hmm. deal with, and that's something which we call insight in our medical terms. Right. He knows that there's a problem mm -hmm. and he comes to you seeking uh, coaching. Right. So what exactly happens in this coaching and how do you help that person? Yeah, great question. You know, coaching is a very beautiful uh, sort of, you know, approach, I would say. Uh, so in coaching parlance, uh, unlike other human aid, like counseling, like psychotherapy, you don't provide solution to the, to the uh, client or, or to the person concerned. In coaching, what do you do? You allow the man concerned to do the heavy lifting. You ask powerful questions. You ask that person concerned that tell me what you are going through, narrate. When that man start narrating what he is going through, he himself starts becoming aware. My good God, I mean, is it just the external layer or the actual truth? And more and more powerful question you ask, you be in that moment, you allow that person concerned to become more and more vulnerable, open, and you hold a space for that person with a lot of compassion. Okay? The person starts becoming aware that my problem is somewhere else. Okay. So I need to acquire more and more skill, more and more sort of you know technical or behavioral skill. I need to look at my deep-rooted beliefs and values which I picked up during my formative stage, but they have outlived their purpose. 
Okay, so I need to, it is high time to change them. I need to ask myself, who am I and what do I want to become? And putting effort to transition from who am I at present to what I can become. And, you know, in coaching, we believe that every, every person, every man has humongous potential to transform himself. That's the beauty of coaching. Very good. Appreciate it, sir. So typically, sir, uh, in this line, when you deal with men day in, day out who are working, hmm. what are the common problems that these men come to you with in the office? Yeah. So men would generally come cribbing, complaining uh, about, you know, uh, that I did not get uh, promotion, I did not get good increments. Uh, they would generally uh, compare with their other colleagues. Uh, so that is a typical kind of complaint I am getting. Okay. Uh, so uh, hardly I get, you know, uh, men who would come and who would say that, Ki, please help me know, uh, you know, what should I do so that I can have a happy life. I can have meaningful life. I can grow in holistic manner, so to speak. Okay, so, so yeah. So it's all about their finances, their positions. Their exactly. And, all that. and comparison comparison so that kind of you know that uh, hurt them at a psychological level and maybe you know the same historic reason that uh, they would always think that you know getting promotion getting more increment is all about masculinity so to speak so sir, typically how are you able to solve these issues and how do you address these issues that yeah so this is tricky because see, let me tell you, on one hand, organization has limited resources, but other side, you can't flatly say, you know, men or women for that matter, that no, 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 you don't deserve this. Because see, I fundamentally believe that every man, and why only men, every human being for that matter, is a great possibility. It's sitting on humongous potential, on gold mine, so to speak. But because they are not aware, they sort of, you know, they, they unnecessarily compare themselves with others. So what do I do? I first of all ask them to sit comfortably. And then I ask them, what happened? Tell me. Do you see your life, everything in just a span of one year? Or you would like to examine, you know, and come up with some solution which will help you grow in holistic manner which will give you the real joy in life and on continuous basis, which will help you find the meaning in your life. And then I use my uh, coaching technique. I help that person to first of all become calmer and calmer. And I say that, look, treat me as your partner, not as your boss or CHRO of this company and become vulnerable and I will help you to know who you are, what are you sitting on and what you should do to improve yourself so that you can grow in continual manner. You can get joy of life in continual manner, so to in speak, more holistic in more holistic manner, yes. So I would want to ask you a few uh, questions about yourself also. Please, so please. As a person, sure. and our audience also knows you as the man you are. So typically, sir, what have you been through uh, in your life to be able to, uh, you know, come to the helm of affairs? And what do you think are the real struggles that you faced as a man? Well, so I also went through the same, uh, same psychological deep-rooted, you know, belief system that, uh, uh, I am the bread earner, so to speak, and I have to, you know, earn money. I have to sort of, you know, take care of my family. Uh, I have to educate my children. And in this whole process, I started training myself. I grew, no doubt, but I put a lot of stress on myself. But I would say that, you know, some people in my life, some great people in my life, uh, they, they, they came 
as I would say, uh, I mean, uh, they were like God sent, I would say. And they created awareness in me. Okay. And uh, then I started working on and exploring those areas where I really enjoy doing, where I could really do a great job. Okay. And my life has been like a meandering river, so to speak. Okay. So I started, I'm a metallurgical engineer. I started my career uh, in operations, hardcore operations. I used to produce iron and all that. Then I moved to DQM and then to HR and business development. I would say that, you know, when I look back, it, it appears to me that life kept happening to me. And I accepted everything with all humbleness. I said to myself, what is coming to my life is God sent. I have to learn. I have to accept. And that is the way I That's grew. Yes. So typically for your own health, what all measures do you take as a man? Okay. So, you know, the first and foremost thing, uh, as I said that every day I say, that whatever is happening in my life is happening for good. And that helps me to stay connected with that Almighty's. The second thing is that, you know, I, uh, I would regularly do the exercise. Uh, I, I go for walking. I, I will do push-ups. Uh, I will do meditation. So I keep doing all these things. Okay. And that helped me to maintain my health. Uh, but you know, the, I, 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 my understanding is, my experience has been that uh, uh, if you are at psychological level, if you are like, you know, if you appreciate this fact that everything, whatever is happening in your life is happening uh, for good reason, that itself uh, helps you to stay healthy, so to speak. Because this, you know, your psychology and physiology, I mean, you're a doctor, you know, much better than me. They kind of interact, they kind of feeding uh, each other. So that is how I take care of my health. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, sir, what about uh, your journey as a man? Do you ever feel that, you know, in this era where, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, the diversity, inclusion, yeah. about feminism, women empowerment. Do you feel as a man you've been at any disadvantage ever? Not really. Uh, you know, the reason could be also that, you know, I have two daughters. Okay. And uh, they have kind of, you know, undergone good education. They are doing great in their life. Uh, so, I don't kind of, you know, differentiate between that way, male and female. Okay, I firmly believe that everybody is uniquely gifted. Even two men, they are differently abled. They are uniquely gifted. So this appreciation is very important. Okay, and that has led me to uh, kind of, you know, not get sort of, you know, impacted by any such kind of feminism and all that. Though, see, uh, in human life, such kind of milestones, such kind of changes will come because of the various reasons that will happen. Uh, but then, frankly speaking, I have never been sort of, you know, impacted. Wonderful. So, sir, it was a great pleasure to have you on our show. And we've learned a lot of things about, uh, you know, being a man from you, especially on the job. And I think the take home messages have been that, you know, men don't need to think of themselves as it was earlier in history. Right. But treat the other genders as, as partners uh, you know, to uh, move forward. Yeah. And not take everything on themselves. That's and right. Create an unnecessary stress in their right. lives. Right. Right. So I hope that we'll have, uh, you know, many more uh, things to learn from you sure. as we move ahead, uh, as we connect with you as an expert in the field of human resources sure. through various articles on our website through yeah. various interviews and things that you know, keep me angry as you said <laughs> as well. okay. thank you thanks doctor pleasure